As history moves forward and this new emerging market expands, we have started to be able to observe history in this very young industry and start to see trends, business strategies, and many other things start to evolve and develop into new iterations. While there are many precursors leading up to the explosion in popularity in that of the cookies brand and the marketing tactics implemented by Burner, well, we have seen this evolve and develop into new iterations of these tactics. First came Burner and Cookies, right, around 2012. Then four to five years later, we see Ray Bama, Nick, and Young OB popularize the Runtz flavor. And brand starting in 2017, marketing the first iteration of Burner's initial modern day marketing strategy where pop music, popular culture, and that of rap is leveraged with the backing of the streets and the authenticity that comes with that. If you haven't seen the high design episode I did on Burner and the Cookies brand, or the high design episode I did on Jokes Up and the Runs, I highly recommend you go and check those out to give you more of an idea, some more context and understanding of this video that you're currently watching. But what can't be denied is that both Cookies and Runs represent two time periods in this new modern emerging market from around the 2010s to around 2016 the cookies flavor and the brand built on that flavor by burner would mark the first time in this newly legalized slash commercialized industry where a flavor would become dominant in popularity throughout the country now there have obviously been eras prior to 2009 2010 where a flavor became dominant in popularity or extremely popular across the country. For example, the OG or the Bubba or a number of other flavors. But like I said, cookies came about in a unique time where things were changing, right? Medical markets around the country were starting to open up, especially on the West Coast. Social media platforms like Facebook and Twitter started to enter mainstream use. The iPhone and other smartphones became widely adopted by the general public. And so these new societal changes and conditions was the perfect infrastructure to help popularize and propagate the cookies flavor and the cookies brand. Not to mention this also coincides with the first states in the US to recreationally legalize in 2012 with Colorado and Washington State leading the charge. So like I said earlier, cookies marks the first time in this new modern era where a flavor is nationally known and effectively has been interwoven with many different aspects of popular culture. Now, like I said, if you watch the high design episode on Runtz, you'll learn more about how interconnected Burner's cookies brand is with the Runtz brand. But with both cookies and Runtz, these are two extremely famous strains that have also morphed into actual brands as well. Both brands leverage music to promote their brand. Both brands have extremely popular and successful apparel lines. And like I said, the modern era started with the cookies era, which then transitioned into the runs era. Now, the runs era in my rough estimation, it was around 2017 to around 2020. Now that's just my opinion, just take it as so. Now, what was quietly being built in the streets throughout the US starting in 2019 was a new strain and a new movement, a new set of brands supporting potentially the next flavor in line to earn the top spot and start the new dominant strain era in the US. Hey look we got it, rubber bands in our pocket. Don't come around the squad if you know you ain't fully rocking. In and out of lanes, my backpack full of exotics. I really came a long way from flocking. How you roll running, and you broke, you suckers need an alignment. All about my paper, I understood the assignments of calamari and lobster from growing up eating grimy. You ain't coming out, we coming, they just stop it. So starting in Detroit and Washington DC, the street infrastructure started to really push the lemon cherry gelato flavor, mainly popularized by the Backpack Boys, while slightly being helped by brands like Canatique. The lemon cherry gelato strain began to spread all over the country. Like I said, in 2019, 2020, folks from DC and Detroit were propagating the flavor's reputation and name all over the country. Later in 2020, well, folks in Florida, New York, Texas, all over started pushing the lemon cherry gelato flavor. Now, before we move on in this story, I want to make an important note that in my opinion, I believe that the lemon cherry gelato flavor 
which was obviously proliferated by the Backpack Boys, is probably the last time we're going to ever see a flavor hold this much national attention and dominance. Now, this is obviously a hypothesis of mine, a prediction of mine, but let's go over a few different reasons for why I think this may be the case. So the first reason is that in many ways, when we analyze the proliferation of the cookies, runts, and now lemon, cherry, gelato flavors across the country and the world, well, we can see much of the rise in popularity for these flavors. Well, it's rooted and bolstered by the traditional market, the streets. And as more and more US states and countries around the world start to legalize, well, we're going to see a lot more education and access to a vast array, variety of flavors, and inherently resulting in a much more complex and fractured consumer preference for flavors. More options, more complexity, more fracturing, right? With legalization, there will be a lot more access points for flavors and products coming from many different new producers slash suppliers. See, cookies, runts, and lemon cherry gelato were able to become nationally recognizable and dominant flavors because like I said earlier, they were proliferated through the streets. California dominated popular strains in the country for many years because, well, they were by far the biggest supplier to the traditional market all around the world, but domestically, right? Whereas with the legalization, we're going to see way more localized growers supplying their community and therefore making strain popularity slash dominance much more regional rather than national. This region and this state is going to love a certain flavor, while another region and another state is going to love this other flavor, right? The days of single flavors having national dominance is most likely over, and like I said, in my opinion, the third and last generation of national dominance and popularity of a flavor is lemon cherry gelato, which has been mainly backed and proliferated by the Backpack Boys movement. Now, let's break down and analyze the current popularity of the lemon cherry gelato flavor and the mechanism in which the flavor ascended into national popularity. So like I said earlier, for a flavor to have national dominance and popularity, it has to be propagated by the streets. And obviously, the lemon cherry gelato flavor was doing that. Now, obviously, the Backpack Boys were the main platform to help pop this flavor off, but a major hallmark occurred in late 2019 early 2020, more so a more notable thing that we need to talk about, which was when the cookie store on Melrose decided to sell some of the Backpack Boys product. And the day that Cookies Melrose first sold the lemon cherry gelato from the Backpack Boys, well, it was an instant hit quite literally after one day in, at the time, one of the most popular rec stores in the entire country, which truly initiated the swift ascent in national popularity for the lemon cherry gelato flavor and the backpack boys see we need to remember that cookie stores especially the ones in la and especially in 2020 almost served as destinations for enthusiasts about this new and emerging industry to make a pilgrimage there right it's a journey that you know enthusiasts from all around the country travel to go cop products from the cookie store and this, you know, pilgrimage, right, for lack of a better word or term, seems to be, you know, at its height in 2020. So while the street infrastructure had been formed, the gas was dumped on the fire once Cookies Melrose started jigging the Backpack Boys lemon cherry gelato packs. Authenticity was created in the streets and legitimacy, well, that's created in the, the regulated market. Now, what's been fascinating to see is how the Backpack Boys have innovated and overcome roadblocks that have uniquely affected them, even more so than it affects you know the rest of the community. Have you ever looked up on Instagram and tried to search and find, quote unquote, the official Backpack Boys Instagram? Well, it's pretty much impossible. There's, first of all, just hundreds, maybe even thousands at this point, you know, fake accounts. And... You know, I've been told by people at the Bad Bad Boys, right? They, they literally cannot create an Instagram account. It gets taken down every single time. And it's honestly pretty wild. 
And so the founder and CEO of the Backpack Boys, right, Juan Caseta, was obviously extremely frustrated with being constantly forced to start from scratch after investing time, money, and manpower into building these different Instagram you know, accounts. He also learned from his endeavors investing into more traditional physical advertising and that of renting billboard ad space throughout LA slash Cali. Now in that experience, he learned, he realized that Instagram was not a smart, stable, long-term investment and that billboards were costly and only up for a set amount of time, usually being two weeks. So that's what pushed him and his team to start to invest in establishing their YouTube presence. Now the start of the Backpack Boys YouTube channel somewhat coincides with the first Backpack Boys store opening up in Cali by like a month or two, roughly. And while the YouTube channel has now become a promotional tool for the brand as well as a platform for different rappers and musicians, I think if we look at some of the initial videos on the Backpack Boys YouTube, we can almost use those as a thermometer or a measurement, a potential indicator of how the Backpack Boys were in many ways quietly making big moves in the Cali market. I, I, I remember I was broke. I had a thing fake. Got a nigga extra high. If it ain't stamped by the boss, then it ain't verified. I'm trying to be my own boss. I gotta make it out. The opening of the Cookies Melrose store has been rumored to have, you know, a record, you know, sales day in the first week or something. That had around two hundred seventy-five thousand dollars or three hundred thousand dollars in sales in one day. Now that's just a rumor. That's just what people have claimed. But it's also crazy when you start to hear the claims that the first Backpack Boys store opening, right? They actually broke a record and they jugged about four hundred thousand dollars in the very opening day. Now, we can't confirm those numbers 100 percent, but honestly, I, I believe the claims. If you haven't seen the high design quick back episode I did on the Backpack Boys, I highly recommend you go watch that. It will definitely give you more context to this video, help you better understand this video. But the reason why I initially did that quick pack episode originally is I just so happened last year to be traveling to LA for some other business dealings the same weekend they had their grand opening. And I swear to God, it really shocked me. I noticed on the plane ride from Seattle heading to LA that multiple other passengers were rocking Backpack Boys gear. Now that's on the way to LA. Now on the flight back to Seattle from LA, it absolutely shocked me. I swear to God, on the way back to Seattle, on my plane, there was three to four separate groups totaling around 20 plus people all rocking Backpack Boys apparel. And it just, you know, happened to be the timing of it. Obviously, this is their grand opening, but it was absolutely insane. Now, I also was being harassed by, you know, many of my viewers for months prior to cover the Backpack Boys. But yeah, starting in early 2021, the Backpack Boys began to really showcase their cultural influence and overall reach in and throughout the traditional markets around the country. And while, yes, the insane amount of fake packaging is a good sign of this, the main symbol of this influence and reach was the proliferation in the popularity and name recognition of the lemon cherry gelato flavor. Now, while Juan Caseta and his team initially started their YouTube because it was, you know, one of the more safer platforms to invest money, time, resources into, their move into funding and producing different songs featuring rappers from all over California really helped reinforce the popularity and the name recognition of this flavor. See, I don't really think that initially the Backpack Boys deliberately planned to implement a more modernized music marketing strategy, building off of what Burner and the Runs crew had done previously. But that's what organically happened. I think once the Backpack Boys saw the power of music and the insane amount of eyeballs, reach, and exposure it could provide for this brand, they started to really focus on maximizing that music marketing strategy. 
Now on this, I wanna make a note, right? I think that the music marketing strategy has really mainly worked for Burner, the Runs crew, and now the Backpack Boys because they are viewed by the public as plant entrepreneurs first and rappers slash musicians, music producers second. See, that's why we see many of these rappers or celebrities fail in this new emerging industry because well, they are first and foremost associated with another occupation, whether it be music or acting or something else. See, the culture and the current landscape of the culture and the industry really only respects folks that put the culture and industry before anything else and not some celebrity that slaps their name on a product or some products and they don't even give a shit about it at all. And they don't even know what the hell these products really are. It reeks of inauthenticity. Authenticity is an absolutely critical ingredient in the recipe to build a brand loyalty and therefore brand equity. And see, that's where the Backpack Boys have absolutely shined. Whether you like the music being produced by the Backpack Boys or not, it can't be denied that their music has resonated with the streets. In effect, producing an abundance of authenticity. Now personally, not gonna lie, I really like the different records that the Backpack Boys have been putting out. Seriously, it's super dope. But I'm sure there are people watching this that would disagree and don't like the music. But your opinion and my opinion have no weight in this matter. The fact is, the streets absolutely identify with the Backpack Boys brand. And like I said, for a flavor to become nationally dominant in popularity with so much name recognition, like cookies, runs, or lemon cherry gelato, it has to be proliferated through the streets, or at least in this new modern era, which started in 2010. Now, obviously there can be a lot of opinionated subjectiveness in determining the popularity and dominance of a flavor nationally, but I think a decently good objective metric to observe is the amount of internet traffic and content generated by the public discussing the flavor. Whether it's analyzing the number of references to the flavor in different songs, or just by analyzing the number of YouTube videos talking about the flavor, which then we can cross-reference with the date the content was actually posted. So when searching on YouTube for a Runs Flavor review, we can see a couple of videos created within the last year, but the vast majority of the videos discussing the Runs Flavor are from one, two, even three years ago. When observing the YouTube search results for the Lemon Cherry Gelato, we see the majority of videos discussing the flavor being uploaded within the last year. Now, that obviously is not a 100% definitive indicator, but really, I think we can correlate the success of the Lemon Cherry Gelato flavor with the success of the Backpack Boys. And shit, I'm sorry, you cannot deny that, at least in 2021, well, that was the Backpack Boys breakout year. At the same time, 2021 was also the breakout year for the lemon cherry gelato flavor. Anyways, I know some of you watching may think my analysis and claim that we are in the lemon cherry gelato era is wrong, but I really just want to pose the question and start the conversation on really how do flavors become nationally and internationally popular? What is the mechanism behind the dominant hype flavors in this new modern emerging industry? What are your observations? See, personally, I've been fascinated just with the overall idea of how do you make a flavor nationally recognized, nationally beloved, and extremely famous? What is the components? What are the processes that go into that? Obviously, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of variables, but I think it's been pretty fascinating to see this era where we saw the streets dictating a lot of the trends I love you, I love you, and with the streets dictating those trends we got this era where the cookies the runs and the lemon cherry gelato well they became nationally dominant flavors like i said i think this model first showcased by burner and the cookies flavor utilizing the streets music and popular culture as well as media to generate a dominant flavor era is most likely going to end with the Backpack Boys and the Lemon Cherry Gelato flavor. The expansion and access of a vast array of more localized flavors has and will continue to fracture any potential attempts or bids 
in creating a national hegemonic flavor. Like what took hold with cookies, runts, and in my opinion, the lemon cherry gelato. But who knows? I may be completely wrong in my hypothesis. Really, only time will tell. Anyways, please let me know your thoughts down below in the comments. Do you think the era first started by Burner and Cookies is over after the lemon cherry gelato era finishes? Or do you think another dominant flavor pushed by a group, a company, or a movement will appear in the future? Like I said, let me know down in the comments. Would love to hear your thoughts. Anyways, big shouts out to Burner, the Runs crew, and of course, big shouts out to Quesada and the entire Backpack Boys and Five Points LA family. Anyways, if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe. If you are not, share this video, hit the like button, follow me on all the socials, join the Discord. The links are down below in the description. Anyways, this is LMC, signing out. They just get a shorter man waiting for perfect timing. In my city, they pick you off for some diamonds. Say they see the wood, I'm still hopping out, they still shining. They gon' say they with you against them and they still lying. They just get a shorter man waiting for perfect timing. In my city, they pick you off for some diamonds. Say they see the wood, I'm still hopping out, they still shining. They gon' say they with you against them and they still lying.